with the market for identity as a service poised to reach some 16.38 billion USD by 2028 alone, identity transformation is now overtaking its digital and cloud cousins in terms of business prioritization. One key area is a challenge to balance mitigating cyber practices against enabling remote and hybrid working practices too. And the key, the key to attaining flexibility and security by design is this focus, is identity. So to dispel some of the myths, get tangible takeaways and advice, do join us for this identity special event. Before we do anything further, I have an amazing panel with us today, and I'd love to do a little round robin first to get us started. And then also just to all our audience here as well, Q&A, we love your questions. So whether that's within the event today or outside of it, we'd love to respond to your questions, your ideas and your opportunities too. So we really want to listen to that and respond to your concerns, your suggestions, your ideas as well. So without further ado, I'd firstly love to introduce our panel. And if I may, we've got a lovely coming together here with Jump Cloud and Totality Services. Perhaps Raj, if I could go for you first, a little bit about yourself, the person behind the tech, if you will. Sure, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Sally. So uh, again, I'm Raj Bargava. I'm co-founder and CEO of Jump Cloud, and I've been founding and running companies for a very, very long time. We've done 10 now. So uh, this is my passion is, is building, building uh, transformative technologies that, that can go out to the market and really make a difference. So that's that's me. I love that, Raj. Thank you. Pleasure to speak to you about that earlier as well. Real shared passion. And Pedro, I'd love the same question to you. A little bit more about yourself for the audience would be wonderful. Thank you, Sally. Great to have a, great to have us here. Um, Pedro Martins, Totality Services, is an IT MSB provider in the UK. Um, we've been doing this for about 10 years now. It's, it's an absolute passion. It's not a job we, we, we've always wanted to do along with my co-founder. So yeah, we basically developed and built and grown Totality Services um, into delivering IT solutions and, and, and assistance. Amazing. Fantastic. And Charlie, same to you, please. So, hi, I'm Charlie Ackfield. I'm uh, the Technical Account Director at Totality Services. So, uh, I've been working with Pedro uh, for a number of years now in Totality. I've been supporting sort of small businesses throughout the London area for an excess of, sort of getting up again for 15 years now. And uh, yeah, love it. I uh, wouldn't have anything different. And yeah, it'd be great to be you know, partnered with relations like jump cloud as well i love it i love it that dynamism you mentioned there as well for for anybody watching at the moment thinking of this as a space to get into i'd love to kind of respond to that as well what a what a place to have an agency for change i think yeah the the scope of change we're talking about the opportunities to get involved in that well let's put a showcase on that maybe towards the end as well so fantastic (laughs) stuff so i thought for our conversation today i like to talk in pillars and i think really drilling into the what the why the challenges, but also the how of an entity transformation might be a great way to kind of guide our conversation today. So starting with that, what kind of drilling into the IT landscape today, I think probably the first kind of word that springs to mind is, you know, it's complicated. We've got lots of different things coming together, this age of convergence we're living in at the moment. Um, and issues may be around things like fragmentation, like bolting on legacy tech, sprawling environments, sprawl in particular, whether that's cloud or vendor or different tool sets, for example, even things around over-reliance, for example, around Microsoft Active Directory. Lots of different things in scope here. So perhaps we can drill into this, say, perfect storm of, of activity and the way that's affecting organizational thinking as well, and particularly around this new IT backbone around identity. Perhaps, Rod, could I go to you first on this one? And again, I'd love to give this holistic view, yes, what some of the challenges and changes are, but also this enablement foundation as well. Yep, absolutely, Sally. So I think, you know, when we step back and we think of what's the most important thing that an IT organization does for their their organization, their company today, I think it's connecting people with technology, right? And so that has become harder and harder to do. How do you do that securely, safely, and frictionlessly across an organization? That's become much more challenging. So we're coming from an on-prem identity infrastructure, which then has been transformed with adding technology upon technology upon technology to try and make it work for the modern cloud era. Well, so what we said is, why don't we help people transform their identity platform from being an on-prem sort of hodgepodge of solutions into a cloud native service, cloud native solution. And that's really what we think of identity transformation. And there are absolutely challenges all along the way, but there's also a massive opportunity. And I think that's the real, real power of identity transformation is getting organizations to be able to use the technology that they want and have it be safe and secure 
and frictionless for their organization. Absolutely. I know that friction-free point is such a strong one. And we know we've seen quite a lot of research recently saying that if you do have those points of friction, you know, only one or two examples of that could mean a consumer walking away, but equally an ecosystem partner as well. It really is right up there in terms of prioritization. So brilliant intro, Raj. Thank you so much. And Pedro, perhaps we could bring you in here if I may as well. And perhaps we could start with some of the history around the transformation here. And I'd love to learn more about how you're supporting customers in this particular area. Yeah, absolutely. So I think Raj touched on some great points. Look, historically, I feel that we've been limited to what we could actually do in terms of identity. Um, we, we, you know, in the past, it was very much driven by Active Directory, and I don't think there was anything else out there in the market. We're kind of rigid in in that sort of respect. And within time, with with, with the higher the increase on cloud consumption as well, you know, that was sort of the buzzword in the last like, 10 years or so. I was feel that there's certain um, buzzwords within the IT career, within the IT evolution. I think the cloud is one of them. It still is, but a lot is prominent. And that enabled both business, businesses to sort of to leverage up, to start consuming, to increase their take on cloud, whether it be PaaS, whether it be cloud application SaaS, um, which is fantastic in itself. And I, those are some of the real great advantages that you have. The sort of disadvantages is being restricted by a certain uh, problem system that you could then create your identity and link up to said platforms. But historically, there hasn't been much available in, in the market space that we've been able to go out to our customers with. It's, you know, it's pretty much set around Microsoft Active Directory and latest come as your Active Directory, which are great platforms, but we felt that those gates needed to be broken, you know, those shackles needed to be broken uh, in order to, to be able to consume other operating systems, other identity platforms to allow businesses to grow securely and efficiently and effectively. Love that. Absolutely. Grow in the way that they want to have that informed choice um, and things around interoperability as well, I think so, so important. So absolutely, totally agree with that. Really interesting to see that flavour of literally how you're working with customers and what they're finding and how this is really supporting to meet those needs. Love that. Brilliant. And can I drill into that a little bit more with you, Charlie, as well, if I may, and particularly looking at this SME and SMB market as well, so, so important. And again, addressing complexity, I think, has been one of the key challenges here. Yeah, no, absolutely. So obviously the market we sit in is very much looking after small and medium businesses. And so you know, although you know, identity and you know, things like single silo and bringing all these applications and all these cloud applications together is nothing new, but I think historically it's it's been sort of the playground for the big boys and you know, in large enterprise and small businesses haven't had the teams, the budgets, you know, or the ability to really get into this playground because, yeah, I mean... If you go back and look at looking at things like Active Directory and you know and ADFS, I mean the sheer infrastructure alone to be able to set up something that's sort of fault tolerant and redundant, and let alone having the people that can go out and do that, is it's just something that's been certainly out of reach for you know for for, for most small businesses. And so I think that the need to have something that is sits in that cloud space that we can give to security and then enjoy all those conversions without having to people to have. The, the level of expertise needed for those legacy Active Directory environments has been hugely important for us. Definitely, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more with the things you're bringing to the fore here. It's it's absolutely key. And I think also with some of the other changes we've seen as well, for example, more decentralized working models um, in terms of, particularly when we're talking about things from device level, you know, it could be multiple devices in, in that in, in different, different places. And it's often the weakest link in that, isn't it? There will be that way in. So, so important. You know, just in everyday conversation, I think when you know something has become a, a tipping point, should we say, is you're, you might be on a bus, you might be on a train and you're hearing people talking about an entity hack or a concern in this area. It's very mainstream conversation now. It really has you know, travelled over for, for so many of us. So really interested to set the scene around this Persic store. And I wonder if we can come back on one question as well. So I've had a few um, questions here on Twitter actually around this, particularly from IT admins who are saying their biggest challenge at the moment is the technology, but also the, the overload around, for example, around incidents, around breaches, around vulnerabilities and the signals around this in particular. And the question is, do you have any advice? It's an, an early question on this about the what, but it really kind of drills into our topic area here. How are you supporting that particular area of stress around identity management? So the people factors around that. And I'd love to throw that over to any of you, actually, because I think you could all come in on interesting perspectives on that. I think I'll, I'll, I'll quickly jump in yeah. so like just in that sense, because I, I think it's, it's something that I always say that it's easy to get carried away. There is an element of, of getting carried away with how many, the, the ability that you have to consume the sheer volume of technology, sharp and perhaps on the enterprise market, which is where I, I sort of, you know, 
developed my career and it was very much, it was limited. You had a certain amount of technologies or platforms that you were monitoring and supporting and working on. And as you could, we all know through the evolution that just the sheer volume has increased tenfold, if not even more so. So the training becomes, and that's where you're getting other areas being created in terms of in the sort of the evolution of DevOps, right? Where sort of you're going back in time to sort of start command line interface. That's that's come back into the right. In terms of supporting, I think it's essentially down to a very good training. I think it's also understanding the platforms. And I believe in, in rationalization in terms of, of which platforms that you can use to manage or to consolidate uh, as part of a, a technical team. So with the likes of Jump Cloud that you have one platform where you're, you can cover multiple pillars as opposed to essentially having the reverse of having four, five, maybe six different platforms to manage it. So I think there's a case of really trying to consolidate to have the right tool set to create the right sort of working environment and making the team more efficient. Yeah, for me as well, it's, I think it's bringing in additional, you know, it's, it's using automation to to improve your business process and to help things. So rather than having, or even if you, there's often a business need to have all these disparate systems and you need to operate a certain number of them that will form different functions. And so being able to tie them all together, bring them all under so that the identity obviously bring is the glue between everything. Um, actually, although it's sort of, maybe a bit more work to set up in the first place, but once it's running, it's actually, there's, 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 you've got the data, the insights, you can see what's going on, but there isn't as much support, there's not as much overhead once everything's configured and working the way it should be, because you're controlling that authentication, you're controlling it with things like skim and just-in-time provisioning. You, you can then go out and start leveraging your identity platform to, to do all of the hard work that your engineers or your, your teams or HR, whoever that may be, would have been performing manually previously. So Sally, I think, you know, from our perspective, that's exactly the vision that we had when we built the company, right? We wanted to consolidate all these disparate tools. When you're, when you as an end user need to access your device or a file or a network or an application, you want that all to be sort of seamless and from one identity. And as an IT admin or an IT organization or, you know, a managed service provider, you want to be able to provide that level of access to everything a person needs, right? So from that standpoint, the more we can sort of put into our platform to make it easier for people to provision, deprovision, but then also access. You have one identity that's going to let you access whatever it is you that, that you need, but you may do that in different mechanisms. Like, you know, not to get too technical, but you might have an SSH key for a server, or you might use SAML for a web application, right? So you have all these different ways of doing it, but it's still that same identity. So I think that's the way we've sort of looked at it. Pedro, I saw you sort of nodding uh, when I was speaking about that, but that's sort of been our vision since we started the yeah. company. And I agree to use a very crude, very quick analogy is if you've got a house, you, you go through the front door, you shouldn't have to go through the window around the back, around the side. You literally use your identity to go through the front door and you come in and out. And you could almost tie that into applications and that could be consumer-based applications. But by the way, look at the technical engineering team. It could be the, the sheer volume of applications that technical team used to administer, used to manage, used to report, used to configuration, so forth. So that's why we're kind of, I'm a firm believer of have fewer tools, but make them as effective that cover a wider span of the technology that you need to consume or need to manage. Excellent. Really, really good points. I really like that. And I also like the fact that this is being made available to organizations of, of any size too. I think that's massively going back to the kind of SME market in particular. So, so important. You know, we're breaking down barriers to access here as well with, with what's available. So I think that's really important too, because I think sometimes there can be an awareness gap there. Same thing around security. You know, is this support available? How, you know, what barriers are going to be in the way of using that in, in my business? But actually there's a lot of support here and it's bringing it all together, integration piece and making it easier to do too. So there's lots of you know, challenges being addressed here. Fantastic. I'd love to drill in a bit more about this why as well. I mean, we've naturally covered a few things around you know, changing expectations and behaviours in the market as well, but so many things happening. You know, whether that's uncertainty in the economy, you know, everything every we're seeing with the energy sector, rising security threats, IT and OT convergence, so many different things that are happening. And we need kind of more automation, more operational efficiency and more reusability as well. So again, things around you know, shared value. How can we, you know, optimize costs, not just for business, but also for society as well? I think reducing consumption is, is one great example of that. So we've got this big um, focus on market, reducing IT costs, 
Um, getting more from what you have, I think, is another big area. Consolidation, I think, is probably the word that springs to mind. Also seeing things, for example, around public cloud repatriation. So again, more hybrid, more multi-cloud modeling. So I'd love to drill into this a little bit more and kind of bringing this all together. It's kind of worked from anywhere, really, isn't it, in terms of decentralization. So what are you seeing here in terms of kind of drivers around freedom of choice, around openness, but also around geographic and kind of global distribution as well? Maybe there are kind of three main talking points, and I'd love to explore that a little bit as well. Again, a lot of interest in this area. And perhaps, um, Petro, could I start with you, your take on this one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the choice, there's, there's a much bigger, you know, the shelf is much bigger in terms of what you can consume and choose. So that, that's kind of a given. With that comes disadvantages that we've kind of touched on previously around the security side. So I, I think security is playing a very prominent part in that space. Okay. And that's why I think companies as a whole need to tread carefully. Yes, consume, but I know that in certain spaces that there's been an overconsumption and what that tends to lead itself to is, is all this an element of out of control. So it's kind of the, the sprawl that we've touched on in that sort of capacity. Um, so I, I think that there's a lot of scope there um, from that point of view. Basically. Fantastic. Brilliant. And Charlie, I know we spoke before, particularly around areas like complexity. I wonder if we could drill into that a little bit further as well. Um, but also areas that, that are evolving, maybe around ESG too, because I know we've got a shared interest there. So as far as, yeah, I mean, the the, sort of the, the, the processes and the, and, the, and the automation side and the increasing efficiency, of, and from, from our perspective, um, we're, we're the outsourced IT department for the majority of our clients. And so it's hugely important to us to, to reduce the, the complexity as much as possible. We want everything as simple as it possibly can be. We want to remove wherever possible um, any manual processes. Um, because that's where things go wrong. That's where we get caught out. Um, that's that's one of the you know the biggest drivers. Our service desk management team are often, you know, having conversations about things that have gone wrong. When if you can reduce that through automation and by putting these things in place, then that obviously is a huge, a huge help for us. It also makes you know things much more slick for the end user. If, every, if everything just sort of pieces together well, works, you know, they they, they get their devices signed in, they log into Portal and got access to everything they need, and they don't have to you know this, this everything's just it's really 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 slick and works well then it, i think it's just it's in everyone's best interest absolutely probably is a shared value proposition charlie i think isn't it absolutely totally agree got three big win areas there i think and and raj if i could pass that over to you as well yeah so i i think you know the notes i was taking when you were talking about this is you know identity is this really kind of interesting spot in the it universe if you will it landscape it's one of the few things that sort of touches productivity and security. And it's sort of like this combination of the two, right? There's very few things where it's a business enabler, but it's also, you know, potentially uh, something very important for security. So from my perspective, really think about it as, you know, why is this super important? Why should people focus on this? Why are, why are we spending time on this? It's ultimately, it's got to be a positive thing. It's got to be, this is going to enable people to have more opportunity to build a better business to have their team be productive, more productive than they are today. And then ultimately it's going to drive better costs, better security, right? So I think it, in general these days, there's there's so much drive to just cut costs, but at the end of the day, you can't save where, your way to success, right? That's not how you're going to, that's not your, how you're going to get to success. You've got to figure out how do you grow your business? How do you grow your team? How do you make them better at what they do? And this is one of those things where you're connecting people to the technology that they can be most successful with. Exactly. I totally agree with that. It's a similar analogy around security. I sometimes talk about the cost of not investment. You know, I think we change to change the narrative around, around that. I couldn't agree more in terms of that investment in growth for success. I think that should be a t-shirt, Raj, to be honest with you. I think that's absolutely spot on. I, I really, really agree with that. Brilliant stuff. Thank you all about that. Um, and again, the challenge questions keep coming up in, in, in the messages I'm getting over here at the moment as well. So a lot of interest in diving to some of these more in particular. So we've already set the scene a little bit about kind of the IT admin role in particular, the different perspectives of change, but also the different challenges in terms of sprawl, in terms of security threats, in terms of operational you know, burnout, for example, as well. That's something that's rising as well. So lots of things happening there. And again, right pick and mix of where, where we could go with this, but it's absolutely essential in terms of you know improving stability and security, the ability to keep up 
with this you know, rate and scope and scale and sophistication of change that we're seeing, particularly in terms of cyber threats, and a lot of issues around you know how to troubleshoot better. Patching, patching, I think is a really interesting example. You know, over COVID, I think it was on average every company delayed up to five times before patching, and that's one of those great examples of foundations and getting those right, but actually potentially missing that. So there's so many areas we can drill into there. Patching has come up with three different questions already. Um, perhaps Charlie, if I could go for you first on this particular one. Given that kind of stone setting, and again, more challenging that as well, of just kind of picking out a top three, um, where are you seeing this in terms of the biggest challenges you're supporting your customers with? How are you working with Jump Cloud around that too? Because again, I think ecosystem has such a part to play here. Love to hear that from your perspective and then hand it over maybe to Pedro next. Sure. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of challenges with this stuff. So I mean, the one of the ones we regularly come up against again, which is, it comes back again to this this sort of potential for platform sprawl or cloud sprawl where you've got so many different platforms is that unless you've got that central management of everything, you've got you know, countless you know, applications that are being used in different departments in the business. They, they could all be crucial to your business, but they are configured separate. Each one's configured with its own authentication. Each has got its own you know, security configurations. You might have those misaligned. Some of you have requirements for some, not others. You just you haven't got any alignment across, across your stack mm-hmm. unless you control it all through this identity. Um, and also, if you're making it, you're coming into the ease of use and you know you want to make things simple and easy to use because if you don't, then your users are going to find the path of least resistance. And so then you start getting things like shadow IT that are coming into it. So unless, you know, unless you're controlling and having that platform where everyone can, can consume and use really easily, bring, you know, bring their own device, but give them easy access to all the business tools that they need to be the most efficient they can be in their job, then they're going to find other ways to work around it. And that, that's a huge challenge we're seeing as well. Yeah. User convenience versus security, right? It's the, it's the old age challenge and that's what we have to deal with day in, day out across the board. And it's just trying to trying to make things, you know, it's, it's about striking the right balance, right? Because you can overload on security in terms of even more the entity sector, but it's just setting the right balance between music, convenience and security. I think, yeah, Charlie touched on some great points around challenges. I think challenges are, are natural are a natural part of evolution. Evolution is fantastic, and you're developing new platforms, new technologies, new methodologies, and so forth. But with that, brings our own, their own sort of headaches. And I think in this kind of space, now there's a few that kind of spring to mind. We, we touched on the identity sprawl. You know, more services that move to the cloud. You know, that's where you need to start consolidating that front door. To go back to the analogy, you know, you, you can have multiple applications across, but you need to centralize the identity. So, consume cloud. Absolutely, but make sure you do it in the right manner. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself caught up in sort of this big, you know, identity sprawl uh, issue in, in, in sort of in the in, in the long term, so to speak. I think that's some of those other challenges around, you know, identity governance, compliance, ensuring that you're adhering to regulations, whether that regional, national, or, or global, even certainly with, with the likes of some entities that have to adhere to it and. You know, and, and sort of scalability is a big one. The ability to, as, as, as more and more platforms, as we're consuming more platforms, there's a bigger reliance on, on sort of having identity providers to make sure that we're, we're able to do so. So I think that there's quite a, an interesting number of sort of challenges that come across across the board. And the last one I'll quickly touch on, I think it's just, as always, and it's, this is part of evolution again, is that with every new new step that we take and, and with certain, you know, providers out there that, there's that emerging emerging technologies, you know, in the case of whether it's AI or blockchain and so forth, and and how that's going to integrate in that sort of landscape and that sort of you know that identity stroke security background. I think that's going to be something to to really keep an eye on. Absolutely, and, and I think I'd add to that as well around visibility, another aspect of the, the sprawl element as well, if you will. I think that's a really interesting one too. And as you were saying, picking up on the AI theme there, you know, the quality of the, of the awareness and education and support and training you know, around these areas too, so that we can properly think through the integration piece around this as well. So yeah, I always kind of like check uh, that education kind of hand in hand, if, if you will, bring everyone with you. So also the storytelling around this, I think is, is really important, particularly in areas like data literacy and ensuring there's empowerment around this to all roles in organisations, you know, not just tech uh, 
but solely tech facing one. And frankly, every role really has an element of tech or data literacy, you know, inherent in it anyway. So again, that personalization around skills uplift, I think is really important here too. Um, Rod, I'd love to bring you back in here again. It's, it could be an interesting one here to pivot from challenge to opportunity too, in terms of opportunity drivers around this, but I'd love your take from either of those angles. Yeah. I mean, look, I think at, at the end of the day, you know, organizations really are trying to move forward and they're trying to figure out like, how do they solve these issues where they're at? Many of these organizations are coming from, you know, uh, old school, you know, infrastructure, and they're trying to get to the next generation. They're trying to take an advantage of cloud. They're trying to take advantage of AI. They're trying to take advantage of all these next generation things. And like you said, almost every organization in some way touches knowledge workers or workers that have to deal with, you know, some level of technology. And so the core is, how can we make access to that technology secure, safe, frictionless, right? Pedro sort of touched on it very, very much of how can we make sure that people are enabled, but then how can we do that safely? And that's sort of what this all boils down to ultimately is to take advantage of technology. I mean, that's why I think, you know, Pedro and Charlie, um, I don't want to speak for them, but their business is enabling organizations to be successful with what they want to do. And they want to do that leveraging technology. And, and I think that's a pretty, I think that's a pretty big opportunity on the positive side, right? There's obviously the negative issues or, you know, all the security things that, that people have to deal with, but the, the positive side absolutely is, you know, helping people grow their businesses. Couldn't agree more. And I, that's why I really wanted to bring that out as well, to, to, to get that balance in there. Absolutely, there are these challenges to address. And I think we're talking about some really practical, not just from technology point of view, but also from culture and skills, et cetera, that can help uh, support navigating these challenges. But you're absolutely right. Get this right. And there's an amazing opportunity here for shared value success, You know, not just business value, but also societal value as well. I think there's some really interesting areas that we can dive into here. And also that democratization of support around this so so key too and you naturally tied me up there I, I ride in terms of my next area which was all about this how um in terms of, of where we're moving forward here and again i'd love to do a round robin on this and not just from the tech perspective but all those holistic elements that come into play to make transformation of any form of success and Raj, could i go for you first on this one because i'd love it kind of dovetails kind of where you ended off in the, in the in the last question might be a nice way to set up this aspect of our conversation as well drilling in how you're helping organizations prepare to make such an identity transformation you know whatever stage they're at right now yeah, I think, Sally, that's the right right question to be asking, right? I mean, obviously, the technology is one thing, but the, the second piece is, and, and the technology is there. We can all, we know how to do this. We Everybody knows that it's possible. I think when you're talking about how do you get an organization to change, that's where it gets really interesting, right? Especially when you've got organizations that have legacy infrastructure, they've got legacy processes, they've got people that are you know, productive in the way that they've done things. And now you're asking them to change. You're saying, hey, there's a better tomorrow. There's a better way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think absolutely, and Pedro, I'd love your perspective on this and Charlie. I, I think it starts with, you know, basically real commitment and real vision at the top or at some leadership level to say, here's the vision of where we want to go to. Here's the better tomorrow. And then you do a great job of getting everybody on board in an organization around that. I don't, if you don't do that, I don't know how a transformation ultimately is successful. And that's why there's so many failed transformation projects is because, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't get the people aspect of this all taken care of. We didn't get everybody to see what we all saw, what the vision was, where we're going, how we're going to get there, why we're going to go there. And once you've done that, if you're successful at that, I think the process gets a heck of a lot easier. That doesn't mean it's easy by any stretch, but it <laughs> turns it from being a cultural problem into being much more of a execution problem, which is you'd rather be in the execution problem area than a cultural problem. Cultural problems are very, very difficult to solve. And so if you can get the culture on board and you can get the team on board, then you're then you're there and it's just work, right? And yeah. not that work isn't isn't easy, but it's a heck of a lot easier than than the other side. So I couldn't agree more. Can agree more. And one of the one of the points that I would like to make and sort of enforce what Rise was saying is that and by no means I'm not downplaying this at all, Rise, considering all the effort you've done, but the technology part is actually easy compared to the actual journey, the transition, the mindset, cultural yeah. trying, you know, modification, the adoption of trying to you know, trying to get businesses, users, um, and and the challenges that they face within their own organization, right? Whether it's cultural, political, 
that becomes more demanding. So when I say the technology part is easy, it's but the ability to consume it, the ability to use it, and the ability to secure it, secure it, sorry. Yeah, that's kind of when you're comparing it to what the actual the amount of effort, resource, hand holding, vision that you're trying to set and trying to change that shift, that's that's a real complex aspect of it. No, no, that's Pedro, I'll 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 jump in with one example that I think is super interesting that we all know, which is, you know, basically multi-factor authentication, right? Which is such a critical and important part of keeping us safe and secure, right? Think about, you know, five, seven, eight years ago, whatever it was, we were typing in digits um, or we'd have these fobs, even 15 years ago, RSA or whatever, right? Yeah. You have these fobs, right? You remember, this is how we did MSA, right? Pedro. I know, I know. I, I'm, I'm old, Pedro. We know this, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, you you look at that now and up pops a little notification on your phone yeah. and you just hit the button, Right. It's such a transformational experience where people are, you know, they know this is important, but there was so much friction before that it wasn't, it, it didn't catch on as much. But today you look at it, hopefully just about everybody has two-factor or MFA attached to their accounts. And if, if you haven't done it for your email account, please do it for your email accounts. It's so critical. We actually think doing it for devices is really important as well. But you know, I think just even that one single example, Pedro, to talk about, you know, the technology, yes, the technology has been there, but how do you get adoption? It's, you know, you make it super easy yeah. and you make it cultural. Yeah, it becomes the norm, right? There's friction at first. And then so that, that's, a, that's, that's a great example. And there's a few others, like you mentioned, RSA, that brought back some memories for sure. But it, it yeah. does become the norm and people start to realize the importance of it. But you still find even 15 years on, Raj, that you're still, that mesh still has to be drilled. It still has to be core trade. It still has to be sort of handed down as, as, as we do at Totality Services with our customers in that secure, in the sort of that security field, which Charlie does with, with some of our customers and, and the rest of the team do. But it's, it's, it's a fantastic example of, of, of how you hope that in time it becomes part of the norm that you're just doing it. So that's where what we're doing in terms of the identity, again, we're probably getting some frictions and pushback, but with in time, with understanding, with setting the right culture, the right vision, the right information, you kind of you start to move things along. And hopefully, Raj, in ten years' time, we'll have another conversation about the technology we're using now and how right. to well, yeah. to become second nature. That'll be interesting to see yeah. what it will be actually. So, yeah, let's make sure we keep in touch. Love that, for sure. Love that. Look back to look forward. I think that's absolutely spot on. And uh, another thing, just just listening to what you guys were saying there as well, I also think measurement could be an interesting area to bring in as well, and particularly when you're looking at getting that buy-in. Uh, I think sometimes, and again, where, where to start with some of these? I often hear that coming up. It's such a such a complex issue. Where do we start? Where do we start? But you need to know your baseline to do that. And again, to get that that progress and to get buy-in and to incrementally innovate in this way, I think is really important too. So I think measurement matters, particularly when we're bringing in different types of measures increasingly now and with geographic differences that, that came up earlier, for example, around ESG compliance. We're only going to get more you know, in, in this particular area. So again, supporting with that, I think is key. And what you were saying around people, I think it came right to the fore. And one particular area I think would be middle management here as well. Because again, um, Raj, you mentioned about knowledge brokers there. They really are, you know, such agency and such a pivoting role as well. Um, between you know C-suite and VP and onboarding and really kind of taking the pulse, so to speak, in, in in many ways, but often most squeeze too. And we've seen particular issues around burnout and also proximity to churn in that particular layer that is so so important and pivotal for success. So it really is bringing to the fore, I think, all of this together. What an holistic um, focus is needed on identity transformation. It's not just a technology conversation, although that can massively help. We've seen, and obviously, Raj, what you were explaining there in terms of jump cloud technology. And Pedro and Charlie, how you're using that with your customers too. Massive difference, particularly supporting SMEs, SMBs too. But it is that combination. It's technology, it's skills, it's the right change management approach like CICD, for example, um, and skills and skills uplift as well. It's all of these things together. And I know we're kind of in our question section now. Um, I'm going to pick a few that have come through. Um, and again, I'm going to pick the first one, if I may, that goes more onto kind of this human side and the complementariness of, of technology and people together. What advice do you have for my organization? This is from Mike. Um, he's going through, he's leading an organization at the moment. They want to, they're, they're really resonating with everything that's been spoken about today, but it's the culture question. 
what are your top tips in terms of bringing people on board with you in terms of developing these areas? Because they're basically saying they're getting pushed back. Is it another change initiative, that type of thing? How do you get everybody together around why this matters so much? And I would hark that back to kind of why the time is right now for identity transformations as part of this. But I wondered if you would like to come in on that one, because, again, I think you'd all cover this in so many interesting ways. I could take that a little bit if you like. If you, if you, yeah, if please, Charlie. Yeah. We, we do... I have conversations with our clients, you know, all, all the time about this sort of stuff. And we're, you know, we're going in through and the, the benefit of, you know, of, of platforms like Jump Out is you, it's a, it's a double win. You can go in and things become, we've, we've talked about sort of like the security and, you know, ease of use and ease of being diametrically opposed. Actually, platforms like Jump Out bring them together and make them easier to, to, to sell essentially because you can get with, with one platform you can increase your security you can create all of your policies do everything you need to get the improvements like MFA that you need but at the same time making the you know the life of your staff your, your employees easier by bringing the platforms that they use every day closer to them and easier to access so it's really is a double win and as soon as you can have those sort of open conversations around you know you, because increasing security is always is, is always a relatively hard thing. Like, it's an easy thing. Everyone says they want to do it, but then when they get into the detail of it, it's like, oh, we can't do that. So, <laughs> so it's it gives you, I think, the ability to to bring both things at the same time. Fantastic shared value again, brilliant. I love that. Yeah, I think you, you need some. I'm just quickly to interject and to add two points very quickly. You, I'll, I'll touch on Charlie's point around staff. I think the one thing that kind of. Uh, I wanted to touch base very quickly is we talked about previous question initially in the show around burnouts and so forth. I think having in terms of the how is making sure that the staff that we have that have the best tool sets and the ability and, and the right training as well to make sure that they are able to do their job without, you know, these sort of really tough conditions that sometimes you can be put on. So I do sympathize when I hear, you know, sort of countless number of systems being used by sort of a, a senior technical team or technical team because that's where i revert back to my previous point you know consolidation is very important being as lean as you can from the terms of application points of view without compromise i think is is, is striking the balance to making sure that you're as, as, as effective as you can and looking after the staff making sure that, that they have the right tool sets that they're not overloaded um and that they have the ability to come engage discuss because it is about the customers, but it, it's also about the staff. You know, it's about the internal team that make everything that, that binds the customer and the company together. That's what creates the experience. And touching on the how again, in terms of how that 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 vision or the culturally, you need buy-in. You need to try and get a method of, of, of adopting. So the buy-in is generally sort of very key. How you do the buy-in, there are very there are multiple methods around this, um, and I think. It's 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 a buy-in versus a time allowing some time to have some buy-in to slowly gradually. It's not something that's done overnight. I've I've never found. I always found there is actually no timeline. It, it does depend on each individual instantiation of each company and how they operate. And Pedro, I might jump in and just say, you know, one of the things that I would add is, if to to Mike's question, uh, I think it was Mike who asked the question on, you know, how do, too many change management initiatives. I think making sure you're painting the, the picture of what that future vision is and having that time, like you said, Pedro, for that dialogue to making sure there's open discussion, make sure it's transparent. Like the more you can make that open, I think the more people are going to jump in and say, okay, I believe this is where we need to go and I'm going to throw my weight behind this and and help make it successful. I can agree. It's the engagement as well. Have them part of the discussion. Have, have, have That's right. as many people as you can part of discussion have the ability to to sort of get on board and then it makes it easier to push that, you know, that technology or to use analogy, that rock up the hill. Absolutely. I think there's a lot to be said for that incremental innovation approach and certainly the active listening that you were talking about there. They brought their voices to be to be heard and to have the at least have the opportunity to do so. And there was an event I was at recently and one of the most powerful things from that was is a community group. And they were talking about what matters the most about the relationship with that organization was the fact that they'd um, they were part of the community, they'd contributed some ideas, something they found that, oh, can we tweak that? Because actually that's that's causing us a bit of friction here, and et cetera, et cetera. And then they see their ideas being rolled out and that they're being heard. And there's a, like a real feedback loop there that's contributing to that. So I think things like this where you can contribute your ideas and then you see 
a reaction to that over time. And any sometimes it can't be done, but you get a response to that and you understand the why. And all those things together help bring an organization together, I think. You know, all roles everywhere. So yeah, taking that time to do this the right way, bringing people together. We talk about you know, technology going with you where you are. It's the same thing internally, isn't it? You have to bring it one together too. And in the way sometimes I think we speak about customer experience, we need to think about it from the employee experience too. And they're you know, intrinsically intertwined, aren't they? Absolutely. Fantastic. I have two final questions. We can just about fit in, I think. Um, this is a very broad one, uh, and I, re- I really like this, but I think it's important as well with that balance. And again, tech is a force for good. You know, I'd love to bring a little bit of a steer to that, if I may. But what excites you most looking ahead at the next 12, 18 months? I've, I've positioned it slightly closer just with, just with everything that's going on. But, you know, in this age of integration, that, thanks, uh, Julia, has just mentioned that as well. I really like this, this kind of frame here of how things are coming together. Where, where are you most excited about where we're going, both in identity transformation or more broadly? And um, so Raj, could I go for you for that one first? Yeah. So I'd love to go first. So um, that, that question is such an amazing one because, in the, you know, I think in the next, let's say, one to two years, the real opportunity right. is automation, yes. right? So especially with, you know, around identity and basically onboarding people, offboarding them, making sure that they have access to everything they need. Well, there's a huge opportunity for organizations to automate that whole process, make sure it's safe, secure, and as importantly, make sure that that person who's starting or changing roles or whatever it may be, getting access to something, that that's happening quickly and frictionlessly. That's that's the real opportunity. And it's so hard to do. It sounds so simple, but we've been working on this problem for 20 years, 20 plus years. And it's still hard. So I think over the next couple of years, that's something that we're very focused on to make sure that that enablement is done automatically. It's safe, it's secure, it's easy, and ends up being frictionless for not only the IT organization and the, the managed service provider, but also you know that that end user. Fantastic, love that, Raj. Thank you, Pedro or Charlie. Did you want to give a take on that one? The same for me. 100% automation has to be. Um, so we're we're very passionate about automation as well. I mean, it's not that we want to you know get rid of all of our staff. We, we value them hugely. We want them to be. We would rather than you know, there's there's so many processes that you don't need. People shouldn't be doing. You know, we would yeah. much rather we'd much rather our team are out there talking and having positive engagements with our customers and selling our business to them rather than than doing anything that involves a manual process yeah. like setting up users and devices and getting every, all that setup process. So. Yeah, 100% automation. Yeah. I, mean, I always like to tell, uh, I was going to say, Charlie, I'd love to tell people there's way more work in the world than we are able to do. So the more that we can automate, yeah. the more that we can get to kind of the, the really interesting work. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with both of you. Um, the, the one thing, that the mantra that we try to hold at Totality Services, the two keywords, that we, it's, it's actually part of our every year when we have strategic reviews and then our initiatives for the year. The two words always come to the top of the list and it's becoming easier and easier. And they have been on our sort of mantra. Charlie, I think you'll know, is, is automation and orchestration. Those have been the two things that we've been trying to yeah. do, trying to evolve our, our whole ethos around totality services, aside from the customer service. But anything that we do in certainly, even with our customers, we try and fit those two key words in wherever possible because as time evolves, as the IT industry develops, you know, and sort of evolves, in it, it, within strategically those they're becoming easier to implement they're becoming easier to adopt um because those barriers have been broken down by companies like jump cloud that enable it, it opens up the market to everyone to every single type of customer it doesn't mean that previously in the legacy days or an enterprise it was only available to enterprise and that's the beauty about the era that we live in now is that the technology that we are consuming i mean my son consumes the same technology that I am 20 years ago. That would be known in existence. So I love the trajectory that we're on from a global perspective, from a technology view. Um, and I think it's only going to get better and better encompassing those two sort of keywords um, and obviously the big security intelling that we're going to see in the future. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. 
Fantastic. I love that. And again, that enablement aspect is really coming to the fore with what we're talking about here as well. And again, it's such an important point to make, I think, when it comes to automation. You know, again, this could be complementary strengths. So it can be, you know, freeing up, going back to that freedom, um, the opportunity for, you know, higher, higher order, higher value kind of work and reducing that burnout. And frankly, also there's use cases and work yet to be reinvented. I think we're very much talking about this here as well. So I know we need to bring this to a close. So maybe we could do a final round robin either kind of focusing on jump cloud and totality in terms of kind of a focus for the next few years, kind of what, what excites you most about leading the way here and what, what, what you're looking forward to. Maybe a little snippet around the innovation pipeline, if we may, um, or a final kind of tangible piece of advice you know, for the audience here, because I get a lot of questions about what can we apply now? What can I think about now? And in the same way, for example, with security, 2FA would be an example of something you can do in a relatively straightforward way. And I think it's about 98% of attacks would be negated from that cyber hygiene. So something like that, a foundation to start on now, or something you'd love to share about innovation opportunities ahead. And I'll reverse the order for this final one, if I may. Charlie, if I could go to you first. Uh, are we t- I mean, uh, as far as advice is concerned, yeah. I mean, if you're not, if anyone is not leveraging MFA across all of their platforms, please, please do that like, immediately. Um <laughs> It's, yeah, that's uh, that. That I hope we all should go without saying these days. But um, I think, yeah, it's, as far as well, what we want to see more of it. It's going to come back to me back to automation again. We want to be able to see more things that are. I think AI is going to be an interesting one that we touched on briefly about how that's going to come in and help with the automation elements. We're already seeing things like how we're going to be using AI to interpret things that are going to do and that what impact they can have on making some smarter decisions for us. But um, as as I think we're just, you know, the, the advice would be look at a look at identity. If you're not using any kind of centralized identity management platform today in any in any way, then go out, have a look. Um, that it's it's certainly something that I think will provide numerous benefits to you know, to your business and and make life easier for your teams. So yeah, have a look. Superb, thank you, Charlie. Brilliant. And then Pedro, please. Thank you. I'm going to go theme MFA just to drop it in there again. Seriously, if anyone hasn't learned MFA, do it. So I feel like we're advocating MFA here. So I'll, I'll stick to that same theme. Um, no, look, it, it's it's going to be an interesting as a, sort of scope out the next sort of 12 to 18 months. I think the the level of automation that we've discussed already, I think zero touches on our horizons in terms of how much that develops, because I think that is a fantastic sort of concept and model. And we're already driving hard working with the likes of John Cloud to try and enable that technology, which as an IT MSP, we want to, we, we really want to push zero touch for all of our customers. Uh, and we're excited that we're starting some initial sort of concepts around that and some early stage discussions, but we'll continue to work with John Cloud and, and, and see what other snippets of, of information and, and changes and enhancements that they will have um, along the way, which they have provided over the last sort of two years. And, and that's growing. And, it's going to reach out into sort of zero touch, the sort of the conditional access about how he was. You know, th- there's so many. And I think the biggest link now is obviously, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth here, Raj, but you focus on the identity side of things now, right? And you're building and you're becoming a real big player and maturity, which is fantastic. And that's what I love. The next stage is going to see, okay, great. It's how do we enhance the level of automation and orchestration from both your platform perspective that we can then leverage with our staff and our customers. So that's twofold, but then a more closer link into the security world, right? So h- how does that look like? And if there's any integration, so we're going to put you on the spotlight, but that, those are kind of some thoughts from the yeah. weather. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, you know, I'd, I'd say maybe the, the theme for me, or maybe the piece of advice would be, you know, I think it's so critical for organizations to be focused on people. So focus on that person and what's going to make them successful. You know, we sometimes we get too focused on a technology piece or a device or whatever it may be. But I think enabling people to be successful with technology and doing that safely and securely, I think that's the winner here. That's I, you know, I firmly believe, you know, firms like Totality Services, what they're providing their customers is getting them productive, get making their businesses grow and be more successful. That's really ultimately what we're looking at here. Let's let's not focus on IT as sort of a cost center, if you will. Let's focus on how do we enable people to be successful with technology. And that is truly transforma- transformative for an IT organization, for a firm like Totality Services and, and other folks enabling, you know, small to medium enterprises around the world. So to me, that's the 
that's sort of the core and the center is, you know, focus on people. And in keeping with that, just one last point as well, Raj, sorry, yeah. Sally, it's, it's the experience as well. So totality service is all yeah. about customers. Like our, our number one theme, our number one driver is customer service, okay? That's pretty much above anything else. Technology-wise, it's okay, customer service and the experience. So if we can integrate that that experience that you're talking about, you know about people, and then it's the experience that they use to get to adopt and to actually consume identity and some of those security functions that we discussed. And that's that's the cherry on the on, on top for us. Secure frictionless access, Pedro, right? <laughs> if we can if we can get people to get have secure frictionless access you know, hopefully we can make them really successful and productive with technology. I have no doubt we'll come, Raj, with you there. With you yeah. there. So I'm proud, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, I love that. Honestly, what a way to end it. You, you gave the perfect kind of ending there, really. Honestly, that that's superb. And and also a final thought from me. I, I know we've kind of drawn the threads together already, really, but also the power of collaboration and the ecosystem. And just there, you know, three of you interacting around that subject area and the bouncing of ideas and the mutual support and the enthusiasm, frankly, for the trajectory ahead and what can be done and the enablement ahead. I love that. But I think it's also a showcase of the beauty of coming together uh, and that support in this area too. So I really love that as a, as a final thought from me on that. I, I think that's that really came to the fore in this discussion for me too. Thanks for listening to this episode of Tomorrow's Tech Today. If you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe to us and leave a review. It really means a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and see more behind the scenes video footage on YouTube. Thanks for listening.